Hey guys, Logas Nico here, continuing on on my solar build. I'm pretty excited about this. I just bought a new solar charge controller, but before we get into that, make sure you click that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can see how this is going to pan out. So I got me this. It's a Powell Mister solar charge controller. It's an MPPT, which is the most efficient. So you're gonna get the most bang out of your buck out of your solar energy. Um, the other ones that don't do, they don't have the electronics that control the output. Um, you're not going to get as efficient charging and I've noticed some issues I have with my 30 amp Renergy Wanderer. I need to go to an MPPT. I got enough power now that I think this will benefit me. So anyway, I can get into that in another video and which one's better and why. But let's go ahead and take a look at this Powell Mister 60 amp charge controller. Now this is a multi-voltage. It's a 12, 24, 36 and 48 volt. It will determine that based on the input It'll automatically know that you don't have to change the settings um, supposedly just go ahead and connect it and it'll know so package nice and these nice little foam containers with plastic wrap and here's the unit itself it's got nice fins on the back for heat dissipation so that's good and here is the cover for the connections you have two positive negative for your solar array, positive negative for your battery, and a load if you want to uh, put a light or any 12 volt load, you can do that there. And you do have your connections here on the bottom. So I'm going to go through the manual, which is included, and uh, see what it recommends. Um, I'm sure that probably wire size, what it's capable up two I know my last one was like eight gauge wire uh, wiring precautions so I'm gonna have to go through this and find out what they recommend um, right now I'm currently running an eight gauge wire which I from what I'm running will be sufficient and I'm really gonna stick with that but I will read over that make sure that I'm properly protected now this does have now well, it's the first time I've seen one of these a template for your mounting bracket so this will match up with your mounting holes on the back here perfectly so that's good it provides screws for you uh, there are no um, it does not have any wall anchors just the screws so you might have to provide your own wall anchors if you're going to put this right on drywall and not into anything any wood or anything like that so uh, that's it for the unboxing. It's pretty simple. Not much to this thing. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to get to disconnecting my other charge controller and putting this in its place. It should be a pretty quick swap and then we'll go through the menus and settings and see what we're going to do. Now currently I have a 12 volt system so this is going to still run 12 volts but I will be converting this to 48 volts um, and that will be in a future video in the next series. So. All right, we'll get this cleaned up here and go get this started. Okay, I apologize for the tight quarters, but this is my stairwell. Laundry room's on that side. There's a door right here. And I got stairs here and electrical pair. It used to have my breaker box here, my fuse panel. They moved it outside because of code when I had it upgraded. So that's why all of these electrical boxes are here. They had to put jumper wires. So I got nine of these boxes jumpering over into the main panel over that way. So that was redone by electricians, not me. So if you have any problems with that, take it up with my electricians. But what I have here is I have a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter I got from Harbor Freight. Two energy charge controllers one for my 100 watt bank of solar panels one for my 60 watt panels i do have a charge controller wind controller for my windmill and here's just a meter that i can read how many watt hours and peak amps and all that stuff 
I have three AGM batteries down here. I don't know if we can see them. Yeah, you can see the top of them right there. Um, again, this is really tight quarters. So what I want to do in this video, this is the one that I have running to my 100 watt panels. I want to grow that to where those are going to be into a 48 volt system. So I want to replace this with this. And I was a little concerned because I have this existing electrical wires here. This is a lot taller unit and about the same width. So I think I'm going to be okay. There is a wall stud here. So I'm going to have a wall stud to screw these two screws to. I'm probably going to have to use wall anchors for these two on this side. So what I'm going to do, take this off. I'm going to go outside, kill the breaker. So I don't have any power coming in. Disconnect this. Screw this in place. Connect these wires here. So I got my battery wires here, my solar wires here. Everything should be pretty easy swap. So these two wires go here. These two wires go here and I'm up and running. So always, 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 always connect the battery first. Always. Uh, so I'm gonna connect the battery first, connect the solar, then I'm gonna go turn the breaker back on. So let's go turn the breaker off and I'll be right back. Okay, so if you notice here, this light's blinking. Means I have solar input coming in from the 60 watt panels that I have five of them. So I do have 300 watts, not 300 watts because it's later in the day and it's Michigan. But anyway, I got some power coming in here. This, I have nothing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and remove the solar. And just put those there. Now battery inputs, I'm going to take the ground off first. Always remove ground first. And I have those connected to these bus bars. So um, now I do want to be careful. I don't touch this to anything that's grounding because it is live. That is live connected it is only 12 volts but still it is live i don't want to ground it i don't want to short anything out so i have to be very careful i don't do anything wrong there so let me find a bit that i can get these out we're just going to go ahead and Charge controller gone. Okay, so I search and search and search and search. I don't have any wall anchors. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this without wall anchors. I'm gonna be on two studs anyway. So I think I'm gonna be fine. I'll get some wall anchors and take this down and make it correct. But let's go ahead and uh, see how this is gonna lay up here. All right, so let's go ahead and remove this and check our fit here. I think that's pretty good. So I'll go ahead and connect these wires. Again, battery first. I'm gonna probably shorten them, but I don't know if I need to. So we'll connect. I did not see. Okay, once I figured out my screwdriver was actually the right size, I went ahead and started connecting the battery, put the positive on first, and then I started connecting the negative. When I was connecting the negative, I was expecting to see power. Didn't get power, couldn't figure out what was going on. Then I found out the battery, the positive came loose from the bus bar. I was looking for a power switch. I'm like, I, I don't figure it out. And then when I jiggled some wires, I noticed the positive was loose. So here I am tightening that back up. And so now we can move forward. So well, let's put our negative back in place. I thought it was kind of strange that I didn't see anything happening. 
Oh, I saw a little sparky. There it goes. All right. Now, before I go, I want to make sure my uh, I want to get my settings right. And I'm going to get the instructions, and we're going to both run through that. Okay. I guess once it says battery type option, it's selected. I have to hold this. Gel flooded. Oh, uh, you know what? That CL was probably sealed. So I'm psyched they sealed back. That's what I have. So I'm going to hit enter. So I have sealed. So let's go through the function. So 14.4, 13.8. So that's my float. 11 is my shutoff. Nice. Okay, I think it's set for my sealed batteries. So let's go ahead and uh, turn the light back on, move the camera back around, we'll connect our... I'll leave the camera here. Let's get our... Let's get our solar hook back up. While I still have a little bit of daylight left. Turn my light back on. Zoom out. So I'm left with a positive and negative here. They're going to go here for my solar now. Now, wouldn't you know it, as I'm connecting my solar, I had a little hard time getting the wire to get in the hole and get seated. And so I played around with it, played around. Now, if you notice, the, it's going to start flashing on the screen. And why? Because that stupid positive cable came off the bus bar again. So I had to reattach it. This time I did it nice and secure. So we're good to go. Okay. Double verify I'm unsealed. Yes. All right, last thing I need to do is flip open my uh, my breaker on my solar panels and see what I get. All right, so it looks like I'm at like 20 volts. Um, 70, 70 some watts, which it's later in the day, sun's going down. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. So there you go. 60, 70 watts. I got 400 watts worth of panels. So obviously that's not the best, but. Um, I got 19, 20 volts going in there, 20.3 volts. So obviously it's trying to do a pretty good boost on the battery because the batteries are sitting about, well, they were 12.5. They just jumped up to 12.6, 12.7. So it's already, it seems to be doing a pretty decent job, even with such small wattages. Okay, there we go. I'm going to take cover. Just put that cover on and she's done. She's installed. It was that quick, that easy. So just to give you a rundown on my system, what I have right now, um, I do have, again, my inverter. I do have two charge controllers, one for each bank of solar. I have 100 watt panels now off this MPP2, sorry, MPPT, and this 30 amp Wanderer is running 300 watts, it's got 560 amp panels. 
I do have my windmill controller here. They're all connected to my three Duracell 12 volt AGM batteries. Now what I do have going on now is I have the inverter going right now I only have this. This is an automatic transfer switch, a Mohs automatic transfer switch. What this does is I can program this to, I have short power coming in here. I have the inverter power coming in here and the output going out. And what I've done is I've split the up there. I've split the outlets to where I broke the tab off in the center to where each one of those plugs are dedicated. So I have shore power in the bottom, the line going out top. So what I have here is I got shore power coming in here and then I got the output going up to the top, going out to the load. So no matter what happens, I always have power. So this will automatically transfer and I'll get power to, like right now, this is going to my kitchen and dining room lights, my overhead lights. They're all LEDs, so this little system I had was worked perfect. I could run pretty much all day long on solar and part of the evening. So it was great. Um, problem is, is these I'm gonna end up getting rid of because I'm gonna get a inverter that connects to shore power as well that does the same function as these. Uh, these are good starters. Um, for low power usage. I may find an application form. Once I go to 48 volts, I may keep some batteries, 12 volts and run this 2000 watt inverter. I have it, I might as well continue to use it. But I wanna get a 48 volt inverter and power larger loads. This is only 2000 watt. I wanna to go to like a five or 8,000 watt inverter and uh, power big loads. All right, so that's it. That's what I got going on. And again, this is what my electricians did when they moved my panel. I had screw in fuses here. They ripped them out, put jumpers, ran all the wires, and I have my 200 amp service on the other side of this wall. So that makes it easy since they've already done jumpers. I was able to find the jumpers from the circuits I wanted right in here and jumper into my automatic transfer switches. That what they did here made my job a little easier. I didn't have to pull from the panel. I didn't have to open up the panel at all. I just found out. I just found the circuit. Then found the dead wire in here. Good to go. All right. Thanks for watching. God bless, and don't forget to subscribe. All right, talk to you soon.